Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the gear weathering video for the F-14. We've got all of our supplies laid out here. Feels like arts and crafts time. Love this stuff. So stay tuned and we will get into weathering the F-14 landing gear. Gonna make it look dirty. All right guys, so we'll review our parts that I've got here, our tools that we're gonna to use to weather this landing gear. Uh, you've seen the gear already during the painting video, so we'll just kind of set that aside. Pretty simple set of, uh, of items that we've got here to weather this gear. So the first thing is our Cali Graphics Order, which is the nomenclature for the F-14. Now this is a whole kit for the aircraft itself. Basically we needed this little part here, and that little part is the landing gear labels and stuff. So that's, uh, that's what we ideally needed to complete this task. So we've got our assortment of different brushes here. That's just a, the multi-pack from, uh, from one of our hobby stores. Uh, we've got different oil paints. These are some pretty basic colors. Um, you're basically dealing with blacks and browns. So we've got lamp black, lamp black, burnt umber, raw umber. So those are some, uh, some basic weathering colors. Uh, just some brush cleaner, Q-tips, obviously our brushes, different sandpapers, X-Acto knife, and we've got some different chemicals here as well too. Now all of these can be used to thin oil paints. Uh, they all work fine, don't forget your gloves. They're all gonna act a little bit different. So pure turpentine, it, uh, this, this I kinda like the smell of it, but uh, this stuff here, it takes quite a bit longer to dry. So if you mix that with the oil paints, depending on which uh, turpentine you're using, uh, this particular one, it will take a really long time to dry. So I probably won't end up using this stuff. Uh, the lacquer thinner and xylene are, are good options as well too. So anyways, those are some of the things that, uh, that we're gonna be using to make this landing gear look used. And then of course we've got the landing gear. So if you look at any pictures of a used F-14 online, uh, this landing gear is very well used. Um, you've got paint missing all over the place. You've got uh, rust. I think the big linkages here are um, steel because from the pictures that I've seen, uh, there's big rust spots on the pivot and things like that. So just, uh, just well used, which is our ultimate goal with this landing gear is we wanna make it look and suit the plane. So, so I'm gonna be sharing some techniques with you guys, but the first step in this is we wanna get those uh, decals, decals, stickers, mounted on the appropriate portion or parts of the landing gear. And uh, once we get that done and they're set in place and everything, then we'll move into the dirtying of the landing gear and using all those tools that I showed you just previously. So let's get the decals mounted on the gear and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so there's lots of different reference pictures on the internet for landing gear photos for the F-14. There's one as an example that we're using right now to put our uh, labels on the main gear. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna follow the picture. Now these aren't water transfer uh, decals. They are vinyls, I believe. So, just peel it off. We've got the transfer paper there. We want to run this a little bit lower on the scale setup. It's kind of up here, but I actually want to be able to see this. We're going to put one of the little blue labels down there and we'll hug kind of the inside because that is where it's located on the landing gear. And there we go, that looks really good. And for our little blue one here, just looking at the picture as a reference, we are slightly 
to the right of the main black label. That's actually, uh, you can actually read the writing on this little, uh, this little blue label, that's pretty, uh, pretty slick. So anyway, so that is the process of putting the decals on the landing gear. So we're just gonna continue with that. And uh, if I run into anything interesting, I'll show you guys the, uh, uh, the process, but uh, that's basically what we're uh, doing as a first step here. All right, so step number one with the actual weathering portion here is going to be creating the wear marks. So as we go through this, I'll try and throw some pictures up. I wanna be careful not to, uh, to make anybody mad by stealing pictures off the internet. So, but uh, that's uh, kind of the, the first step here. So if you look at the, the actual F14 landing gear, uh, it's, you'll have big chunks of either paint missing, um, you'll have uh, just big, you know, like like this actually. So when I was putting this gear together, I had a big paint chip that happened right there and I left it. I wasn't worried about it because we I knew we were gonna weather this gear and uh, that worked out totally fine because this is the kind of stuff that you see on the full scale airplane and we have to add even more of it because that is, uh, is what it looks like. So you got a couple options in this scenario. You can either use sandpaper, a file, things like that, and you can uh, get rid of the paint and expose the metal and then do a little bit of uh, weathering on the metal to, to make it look dirty. Uh, the other option is just do that with paint. Now, my preference in this, in this particular scenario is gonna be to sand down the paint that we painted on the landing gear. Uh, I think it's a more realistic look of chipping paint and stuff because we've got that, uh, that option to do so. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just going through this gear uh, with my different sanding items and we're just gonna create some, uh, some wear on this gear. So uh, this is a shot of it beforehand. I'll do a nice slow shot for you guys so you can see everything. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time uh, with my file and uh, let's get rid of some of this paint. Here's another close up there as well. Hopefully you guys can see that on the camera, but uh, you've got a bunch of just little nicks and stuff all over this bottom section. The bottom section is uh, most of the paint's gone, right? So that's, uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so all we're gonna do in this scenario is basically take our, uh, our file and just get rid of some of the paint. Going through, trying to keep the aluminum So that's an example of the, uh, what we're attempting as a first step here. So I'm gonna go through this lower section, do a lot of that, and uh, I'll show you guys the results. So I wanna show you guys as much of the techniques that I'm using as possible without making this overly boring, but, um, so this is kind of the look that we're going for. And, and honestly, I get it. Some people look at this and say, well, you spent all of that time uh, painting this gear and prepping the gear and everything to make it look shiny. Uh, why the heck are you doing this? Well, I get that it's hard to go through and do this to gear that we just made look all pretty, but you gotta remember that this, uh, treat it like a piece of art, right? You're trying to simulate something, you're trying to, uh, to make uh, the full size into the small. So yes, I get it, it's hard, I've been there before, but uh, if you think of it like art or a project, uh, it gets a lot easier, so. Okay, so when you're doing, I find uh, with small areas like this, and I like the green primer for this reason too, uh, you have a little bit more control with the file in certain areas and nicks and marks and things like that. You can see some areas we've gone a little bit deeper and cut out or got rid of the primer and the paint. And then areas like this, we've got a nice mix of primer uh, some aluminum showing, so it's kind of a cool, uh, cool weathered effect. So the the file is good for spot areas like that. Now, what I like using for 
larger areas like these uh, dog bones down here is uh, sanding paper. So just a piece of uh, fairly aggressive sanding paper or a sanding block depending on the shape you're doing. But this is nice because it lets you get larger areas of wear. Um, you know, something like that as an example where a little bit harder to do with the file, but we basically want to take a lot of our paint off of that, uh, that dog bone because this lower area is a very high wear exposed area. So the sandpaper's a little bit nicer to, uh, to be able to do that and get in there and create larger patches. So just take it slow. You can't overdo the weathering, um, but it, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to overdo it. And if you've got a dirty plane that needs to be weathered, it needs to be, uh, needs to look like, the gear needs to look like the plane, so. There we go, that's awesome. Oh yeah. I love when the white disappears like that and you get the, uh, the primer showing through. That's a great representation of what you'll see on the, the full scale pictures. Adding some texture there with the sandpaper. So that is our goal right there. That looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna keep plugging away at that. That's the process that I'm using. Uh, have fun with this, guys, if you're doing it. Uh, enjoy it, because it's, it's, I don't know, I, I love the weathering process, so. All right, and I think this one is done as far as the removal goes. Uh, I love this perspective right here, this outside perspective. I think that looks perfect. And then as we get into the lower section there, uh, I, I think it looks awesome. Uh, sanded the back of the brake off or this rear part of the hub here and that uh, matches some diagrams that I've seen really well. So that is the look we're going for guys. Now this would be okay the way this is right now. I mean, we've added some cool wear to it, but to elevate this to the next level, this is where we get into the, the adding the dirty, okay? And uh, even more important on the front leg because you've got the arrestor hook here, uh, which is pretty pretty cool because you look at the full size ones and this is all just uh, raw metal basically. I think this is probably steel or something, and uh, it's it's pretty unique look. So, so that's the main. This is the first main. Uh, turned out awesome. I'm I'm happy with it. And we've got the second main to do. So I'm gonna work on this one. I won't show you guys any, anything here. I'm just gonna do the exact same process on this one. And then I'll show you the, uh, the main or the, the nose gear. All right, guys. Well, we uh, got a special delivery today. I just finished the front gear, but I figured I would show you the special delivery that we got today. We got the final pieces to the puzzle on this F14. So we got a Jetty DS24 radio system. Thank you, David, for uh, hooking us up with this. Very appreciated, that's awesome. And uh, so that is uh, already pre-programmed with the F14 and uh, the layout and everything's already programmed in there. And then we got our remaining servos here, the 9930s that we were waiting for. And we got the Rex 3 receiver and also the radio control switch as well too that's going to be used on the aircraft so those are the special deliveries i'm actually really excited to uh to spend some time playing around with this radio a lot of you guys commented already and said you're going to love this thing so pretty excited a little bit nervous to uh to walk, try and figure out a new radio system because it just takes time but uh I'm up for the challenge. So anyways, let's take a look at this gear that's right in the, uh, the background there. All right, so main gears are complete as far as the scratching goes. Uh, front gear is also complete as far as the scratching goes. So when you look at the pictures, the hook here, the takeoff hook, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact terminology, is usually very, very worn out. So. 
Um, we did a whole bunch of, uh, of weathering on that thing. And uh, again, following the same idea, the bottom portion of this gear is the very weathered section. And uh, we've gone through and basically done our, our magic everywhere. So next step on this is to start to work with this stuff right here. So I'm gonna get these things organized and then I'll show you exactly what we're, uh, what we're gonna be doing here. Okay guys, so uh, this is again my opinion. Uh, if your opinion differs, that's totally cool. I think that's great. Uh, this is the way that I do most of my weathering on planes and stuff, there's obviously different scenarios, different applications, but this again is my process. Let's dive in. Okay, so for this, I have a feeling we're probably gonna end up using mostly uh, the burnt umber color, uh, not the black, but we'll see what, uh, what the outcome is here when we open this guy up. Here we go. So we're gonna take some of this burnt umber, we don't need very much, and Put that on the tray. And then what we'll do is we'll take some of our lacquer thinner. Right there, lacquer thinner. And we'll just put some of that on there. And what we're doing is we're almost making a wash for this. And this tray thing, that's just a lid from like a, uh, a metal can uh, is what it is, so. Okay, so we're probably gonna use mostly that, but we'll also add some black and we can do a couple different uh, areas here. So we've got some options when we're putting this stuff on. So we'll do the black over on this side and then we can add that in and kind of make a mix with these different items. Yeah, that's better. We definitely needed some black in the mix for sure. Okay, so that is our mixing palette that we're gonna be using. We'll keep that lacquer thinner handy, but we wanna close it. And now let's do the process. So we're just using a cotton rag here. Now, there's a couple different uh, ways that I like to do this, um, but basically step number one, I'll, I'll give you guys a bit of a, a show here on what we can do. So step number one, we can basically wash the entire gear down with this setup. So we'll just do this section right here. And you can do a couple things. So you can let this dry for a long time or you can go in right now while it's just been put on and wipe it off. Now what that's going to do is that's going to highlight all of the scratches and all of the marks on the landing gear. Obviously those are all done by us. So it's also a great way to weather uh, airplanes as well too, is basically do a wash like this and then wipe it off. Um, the other thing we can do is we can just use dry brushing. So what dry brushing is, is basically you're getting some paint on your brush and you are getting rid of most of the paint. So I just take a rag and wipe it off. And if you look on the, the little palette here, I mean, there's just a, a little bit of residue on there. And then you can go in and you can basically add the dirt and the grime wherever it needs to go. Now, when you do the dry brushing, you have a lot more control over how much is going on. When you saw me do that first section, it's wet. Um, you're basically just uh, painting it on is what you're doing. And in this case, you're just lightly putting it on and uh, 
you have a lot more control over it. And then if you don't like what you did, just wipe it off. It's not that hard. This stuff's going to take a while to dry as well. So you've got quite a bit of time to deal with it. And when I say a while to dry, when you're using these oil paints, it could take days to, uh, to dry, weeks even as well too. So um, that's, that's completely normal if you have that happen. So my brush is pretty much empty at this point. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a bit more of that material and you can do this on a piece of paper. You can do it on your little palette thing here. You can do it on your cloth. Like if I do it on my cloth, that's what just came off my brush. Okay, so you're wanting to get most of that residue off. That's actually still too wet. So that's basically what we're doing to this gear is we're just making it look dirty. So when you look at the full scale pictures, um, this is a great representation of what it looks like. Okay, it's dirty. We're not so much worrying about airflow because unlike wings and stuff, you don't have uh, this grease and stuff going with the airflow because the gear is up when the plane is flying, right? So um, keep that in mind as well too. We're not so concerned with the airflow. We're just concerned with making the gear look like it's been used. Now one of the fun areas is areas like the wheels as well too. So generally the wheels are very dirty. And the dry brushing is nice. You really can't go wrong with the dry brush technique uh, because it's just adding it so slowly. And then we can take some of the black, put it on our finger. Take our rag, wipe it off. So there, we've got two different colors at work. Take a bit more black. And totally different representation of what you can do with those wheels. So this one's dirty, looks used. Uh, I'm gonna take my brush and put a few accents down lower here with the black. That's freshly painted. So I'm not a fan of using airbrushes in this uh, particular scenario for weathering because the airbrush looks too clean, too perfect. Uh, when you brush it on with the, with the, the dry brush technique uh, or you do a wash, stuff like that, uh, and wipe it off, it's just more random, I think, in my opinion, again. so Okay, so we'll pick up some black here and we wanna kind of thin that out. Again, dry brush, and this we're putting down low. So when I do this in the middle of the wheels like that, it's gonna be pretty hard to wipe all that out. So you wanna be careful your brush isn't loaded with paint when you, uh, when you are doing that because getting it out is a real pain. There's just no way to get in there. So uh, that is definitely the look that uh, I think we're going for on the wheels. Okay, so I'm gonna continue dry brushing with mostly the brown on this main gear, just everywhere. And then we'll take a look at it and uh, we'll see if we need to add any black accents anywhere. All right, so I think we're pretty much done with the brown. Uh, I've got the inside of the wheels all over the place and uh, I'm happy with that result. So just to compare, because I know that some people are gonna ask, why would you do this? Well, hopefully the camera picks this up, but the one on the left has way more depth and way more realism to it than the one on the right. Now the one on the right does have scratches, yes, but the one on the left just looks used. Now, I'm not done yet. We got more to do. I think we need some black highlights around all the pivot points. So we're gonna go back and do that. Uh, I did add the black line here, which if you look at the scale or the full size uh, F14s, they've got this black line here. Probably I'm guessing uh, as a visual representation to know if this 
is locked. Any of you F14 connoisseurs or people that have worked with them, uh, comment below on what that black line is for. I'm interested. So uh, pretty high tech tool to do that. Uh, it's a, a Sharpie marker. That's, that's it. So uh, pretty simple, but uh, that works out good. And I actually did that earlier, probably saw it in the pictures um, or the, the first video uh, when I first started uh, scratching up the gear. But anyways, you just scratch that up and it looks, uh, looks awesome. Nice little, nice little feature that's easy to add. So I'm gonna go through and add the black now to this other main gear. You can see on my paint palette here, most of my lacquer thinner is gone, but the, uh, the oil paint itself is still uh, a little bit wet. Now, don't worry about that. When this uh, dries like that, you just add more lacquer thinner and you're, and you're fine. So, so now we'll take the black. Again, dab it off on the cloth. And we'll go in and add the black around the pivots. Now it's not gonna be really, really noticeable. It's one of those really small things, but uh, I think it's a good idea. So again, not huge changes, but this area just adds a little secondary color and adds a bit more grime. Yeah, there you go. That's the look I'm going for right there. So you can see the difference. We can just blend that in to the arms itself. <laughs> that looks so good. Oh, I'm not just tooting my own horn either. I think it looks good. I love doing this kind of stuff if I haven't told you already. So that's uh, fun. So I'm gonna continue doing the black. We're just gonna do the dog bone down here. We'll add a little bit more uh, to contrast some of the main gear and, uh, or the, the wheel areas. And then I'll show you guys the final result on this one gear. All right guys, and there we go. Weathered gear on the right, non-weathered and just scratched gear on the left. Let's flip those around. There we go, weathered gear on the left non-weathered gear on the right. All right, so that is the process that we're using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the other main gear, and uh, then we'll move on to the front landing gear as well too. Uh, great time in the video, guys, to give a shout out to all of you that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Uh, amazing, thank you so much for that. Um, it, it's unbelievable, blows my mind uh, to see all the donations coming in. So thank you guys very much. All your names are here on the screen. I really do appreciate it. Uh, the shop is coming along amazingly well. We're just waiting on our big doors. It's gonna be awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, so the nose gear is complete. Uh, I'm really happy with the way that that turned out. I love this, uh, this catapult hook uh, area there. I think that looks really cool. When I've looked at a bunch of the uh, full scale pictures, this is just like nasty and rusty and black and gross. So uh, turned out awesome, love it. So last thing to do here is we are going to put the door back on the actuator here. And then we're gonna add a little bit of love to the, uh, the actual door itself and just kind of blend the, uh, the side profile in and stuff. So nothing too crazy there, but uh, that's one of the last steps here to get these, uh, these gear weathered. All right, guys, and there we are, all weathered and awesome. Uh, so what I did is I just bolted the door on here and uh, just added some black on the side so it's not quite as bright of a white. And there's the same thing on that side, so worked out perfect. So that's weathering the gear. I don't think I'm gonna do anything else in this video. I think that is the end of the video. 
which is a little bit weird because I think, I have no idea how long this video is gonna be because obviously I haven't edited it yet, but uh, I think this video is gonna be fairly short, but hopefully you guys got something out of this video, uh, me sharing my process with you on weathering the gear. If you wanna get a hold of me, the best thing to do is send me an email at the lighter side of RC at gmail.com and that way I can answer your questions directly. So again, hopefully you got something out of this video. Uh, I, I love doing this step on, uh, on weathering things like this. I think it really adds uh, some awesome character to planes like this and uh, Love it, absolutely love it. So uh, I guess one final thing is what we'll do at this stage is we're just gonna leave this to, uh, to, to dry and do its thing. Um, if we were doing a, a, an airplane uh, and weathering the airplane, we may put flat clear on it. So just some of those things to think about um, during this process. So again, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.